Welcome to Real Flix Reviews. We're like a book club for people who hate reading. This week we're doing the movie Shawshank Redemption, May 1994, and we bring you movie news at the end of the program. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Hello. and the man who makes every woman shudder, Ryan Preston. Like we said, we're doing one of my all-time favorite movies. It's the Shawshank Redemption, made in 1994. And according to IMDb, who has apparently lately had the world's most shortest synopsis, two men imprisoned, two imprisoned men bond over a number of years, finding solace and eventual redemption through acts of common decency. That's wow. the whole description. Doesn't really describe the movie all that much. No, what movie <laughs> were they watching? I don't know, but that's what they say about the Shawshank Redemption. And who all wants right. to go first? Because I'll go first if you two don't, because this is my pick. Um, I'll, shoot, I'll, I'll, I'll launch into it for, for a second. Um, dude, like you said, dude, Are you I done? Mean, this definitely ranks up one of the all-time favorite movies, you know what I mean, ever. Um, for, for a number of reasons. There's, there's movies I love because of repeat watchability. There's movies I love because they're great. Um, there's movies I love because they're kind of artsy and they mean something or they have some substance to them. This one is, is sort of all of the above, you know, for... It, it's one of those movies that, that got all kinds of substance, all kinds of meaning, all kinds of, you know, like like good character study, a great story. But you can watch this movie fucking over and over again Which without is... getting tired. It's one of those movies that comes on cable and you get like half you, you turn it on halfway through it and you just want to watch the rest of the movie. Like, oh, I guess this is what I'm going to do for an hour and a half now. And it's it's the only Stephen King movie that I can do that with. Right, absolutely. Because I'm and, not going to sit there forever with, you know, uh, the Tommy Knockers or, you know, It or whatever else he wrote. It's like, it's on! Let's watch the rest oh, of it! Man, how dare you reference the Langoliers. That, <laughs> that movie was so effing terrible. Look, and then the books are what not What about bad. Cat Eyes? Okay, 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 kind, kind of... Translate great to, to crappy graphics in the, in the early 90s. Okay, but what about Cat People? <laughs> okay, enough of the non-sequiturs. <laughs> what, about, what about your... Uh, but... It, Okay, Morgan Freeman, I've often <laughs> said, I'll watch this guy read a dictionary. Um, because, I mean, just, just him saying words, it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know? And, oh, and, wow. <laughs> you know, like, oh, say another one, Morgan. And... Andy Kaufman did it first. <laughs> um, but You've got to there. Is, I mean, like, look, I love, I love him narrating stuff. And so, so him just kind of being in this thing, I mean, it was one of the first things I think I saw him in that it, it really – like like made me like fall in love with with uh with morgan freeman um it's uh damn what what can you say about this movie this it's like like the perfect movie it's like one of the most perfect movies ever made you know um uh, that shit uh, uh yeah go go on because i'm just gonna start rambling uh <coughs> okay i'll, I'll... hundred times and it's one of those i i every time i watch it i'm kind of paying attention to to different things in it you know okay i guess i'll go um I got this is one of the few movies that I actually like Tim Robinson. I'm generally not a big fan of his movies. Period. You know the Hudsuckers Proxy was entertaining. Oh, uh, besides that, for kids. huh? Huh? But you know, for kids. Yeah. 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 Um, um. Do you have your speakers up loud? I can hear myself. I don't think so. Yeah, I was yeah. hearing him too. I was kind of like, huh? All right. Anyways, right. so uh, the other one is uh, I'm still surprised this is based off a Stephen King short story. The, the ones I've read previous this is the first one i've read that is completely different than everything else he's written uh, all right, well, go. Uh, yeah what do you think ryan uh, um yeah, no that's absolutely i mean it's, it's one of the more real stories that he's that he's ever written as far as just you know about about people in a relatively realistic situation um i think he's done maybe one or two other ones that i can't think misery of my... and the right? shining Oh yeah, The Shining. Well, I mean, The Shining did have the the the, the craziness. What was the first one you said? Misery. Misery. Oh right, right, right. Well, yeah, another one that had some some darkness to it. But this one was just, you know, like like period set um, and just set in a realistic dark place. I mean, it still had you know his 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 sort of signature, you know, like like people in in terrible situations. But it was about as real as it ever got for him. I think. Yeah. Um, and I love the choice of Clarence Brown and Captain ha as Captain Hadley and Bob Gutton as Warden Norton. I just and that and Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins. I thought they they chose an amazing bunch of people to do the the characters. So much so that you can't imagine anybody else playing those characters ever, just because I think the way they they portray those characters. 
Right. Well, and and it was done at a time the 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 nineties, like from the mid nineties to like the early two thousands, was a great time for for making these t- kinds of movies because it hadn't gotten into the digital um, uh, age yet. It was still everything was still shot on film. Everything was still kind of done with that kind of uh, attention to detail, especially like the period pieces. It was it was the type of movie that they they threw a lot of effort into without you know, being able to screw everything up with, with digital effects and, and, and hoopla. And if I remember correctly, this was filmed in a, uh, an Ohio state penitentiary. Uh, like that. that was a, like they shut down, but it's, I guess it's a state museum type of thing. And the other reason is, I think unlike most movies today, I actually generally care about all the characters, all the individual from, Bur- uh, from Brooks who ended up getting released and couldn't handle it to uh, yeah. the, 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 the guards you really hated. Everybody in this movie you loved to hate or you loved. Well, and what it, what I think it did is it, it kind of brought you into the sort of bond that they got when they were in prison. You know what I mean? The, yeah. The institutionalized uh, uh, speech that the that they had with each other uh, yeah. between Red and, and Tim Robbins. Um, uh, it, it was just, I mean... I, that it, was it, actually Tim Robbins. That was the other characters. The, uh, Andy the was... Other oh, right, 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 right. The other part uh, of, the, of, of the group. Yeah, but you you know you you get to so as you love them, you know what I mean. That that was that was the end of that. I mean, and, and just you you really loved it too. You you loved you know the characters and the, and the camaraderie between everybody else. And I, I love my favorite part probably the whole movie is you have Andy Dufresne played by Tim Robbins. How he starts off is this innocent, nice, never done anything wrong, and he gets in prison and he's the biggest crook in prison. Right. Well, and, like he like he even said. I mean, you know, I, I on the on the outside, I was straight. You know what I mean? I had to come to prison to become a crook. Yeah, which yeah. which I thought was, I thought that was funny. I mean, overall, I love the movie. It's probably one of my top ten. I love everything from the character choices, the writing, to the color palette. Probably in my top ten movie. If we ever do a top ten movie list, this is just I love the movie. Like for me, it has amazing rewatchability. Um. Yeah, I I agree with all that you guys said. I, I you brought up a fact that I mean they t- discussed the institutionalized, yeah, in there, and that's a major thing. A lot of people don't talk about that anymore. But I mean, Brooks was totally institutionalized. Oh, hardcore. Red was even talking about that he was becoming that, right? And Andy was realizing that that that's kind of where he was heading because he was making a life in there. Right, yeah, you you kind of see the change, the the arc of his character being like, I don't want to end up like 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 Brooks, basically. Yeah, yeah, and that's something that you know, not a lot of prison movies discuss that. Um, this one, I sometimes get it. This one, and there's another one besides the Green Mile that is another prison movie that that all kind of like were really well done, really well put together, um, and. I can't think of the name of it. Anyways, um, X wounds with DMX. Just throwing it out there. Wow, really? <laughs> Swing and a miss. I did Anyways, just to see that look on your face. Um, <laughs> evil, evil person. So uh, it's a, a really well done movie. That, like you said, there's a lot of great acting in here. Um, I do think it's interesting that uh, that there's different sections of, of Morgan Freeman's character where he goes before the parole board. Yeah. And I find that interesting because it kind of is trying to also show the development of Morgan Freeman's character as well. Right. Because, I mean, he's before the parole board all acting, you know, proper. And then right after that, they go to a scene where he's just walking through the yard, and it's very rare that you hear Morgan Freeman cuss. But he does yeah. it in such a classy manner that you don't really mind. Yeah, just not from the time, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, he comes out and he starts cussing and you just kind of realize, oh, okay, so he's not such a good guy. Yeah. And uh, then at the end of the movie, he does a speech. He's got a little it's a great speech. monologue yeah, that, that yeah. is a very well put together. And I was actually kind of watching that. I'm like, I wonder how many, how many inmates actually tried this exact same speech before a parole board just to see if it works, you know? I mean, that's kind of – it's a very real speech. That's pretty much what he does, and that's why he gets let out is because it's actually him talking. He's not – just he, see a parole board in real life just sitting there like, 
Wow, that's that's really po- wait a second. Is that from shop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. I'm gonna have. To, I know a couple of uh, sheriff's officers. I'm totally gonna have to ask them if they've yeah. ever had anybody do that. Yeah, you know, so it'd be kind of interesting to know if anybody's ever, you know, memorized that and then said, you know, when I get locked up, I'm doing this before my parole board. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's. I it, it had to have happened. It, it just the history of American penitentiaries that had to have gone. Down. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's one of those speeches that it's really well done and it, and. You kind of, if you're thinking about along those lines, you kind of get there. Um, the other thing is that uh, there's so much character development in this movie that you kind of get lost in it. Oh, totally. Right. And and mostly between Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins. I yes. mean, when you know Morgan Freeman was on a certain path when when he was when he started out in the prison, you know, he was lined up with the rest of them taking bets. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, with the with the new fish coming in and shit like that. Once their characters started to to really interact with each other, that's when you yeah. see both you of see their their arcs kind of start to go in the in the same direction. Like being being as much as they just taught each other, you know, what like like Morgan Freeman learned just as much um, from from Tim Robbins as Tim Robbins did from Morgan Freeman. As as far as like, there's more to this, more to life than this prison. You know what I mean? The the, the thing yeah. I always thought was interesting about the character development, if you watch it, it basically it's the whole prison that revolves around Andy Dufresne. Him, yeah. he's the one person, he changes the entire prison yeah. from his view of of the outside world, that this, you know, that his goal was, he's the only person, I guess, who had hope, because he said it in the movie. And, right. and, and Red, uh, Morgan Freeman said, no, you can't have hope. He said, yeah, you don't have a choice here. Yeah. You know, it's going to eat you up. Yeah, and even uh, the the... The warden, I can't think of the guy, the character's name. Um, it's uh, Bob Gunton. Thanks, Gunton. Um, you see his character change from being, you know, straight arrow. This is how it's going to be. You know, there's discipline in here. To, I got to get my own, get money, get set up. And well, he, becomes, he basically saw the cool. cash cow in in Andy Dufresne. Yeah, he, exactly. He, it started out with the whole you know work furlough program, you know, like like building the roads, you know, stuff like that. And then that quickly stu- like stirred up his greed. And then you you see the things with like, look, you're undercutting my guys. And then he's handing up my 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 wife baked <clears> a pie. <throat> look at all this cash in the in the front of the pie, you yeah. know that kind of stuff. And then you see the spark go off. And then with Andy Dufresne here's this guy who was a banker on the outside and now you have him just under your thumb. It was just too good to resist for him. And I mean, yeah, that was, that was the beginning of the end for him. I think that, yeah. the only thing I've ever, I've ever wondered is did Andy do it on purpose? Cause he knew, did he, does his end run knew that eventually he, this is what he was going to use to. Well, I mean, look, dude, you have to assume that, that his entire plan was worked out from the second he really started chiseling out that wall. You, think uh, so. you know, I don't think so. I think uh, his when he started to write his name in there and that and that br- well, piece he was, broke he was out. by accident. But by the time he he really starts getting in there, by the time the Raquel Welsh picture comes in, um, I think that's when uh, he really starts like 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 hatching everything out because he was always the smartest guy there. Well, no, down. the the thing about it is, and they and they tell you this too is he's a chess player, right? So his first move was, oh, I can make a hole. Now what do I need to move into this hole to get there? I need finances outside, but I also need a place. And that's where you see if you pay attention to how uh, – if you pay attention to those little progressive things as he starts well, saying them in the movie, yeah, you can but, put all the pieces and all the moves that he makes. But his first move, he didn't really know except for – I want to win. That's how you play chess. You right. play chess. But, but I'm at after the, same the king. Time, in chess, dude, he was he was thinking three or four moves ahead. You know what I mean? He yeah. he was always ahead of the game of everybody else. And I think obviously the with the whole warden thing, once that routine sort of got established, that's when he probably hatched, you know, his overall you know master stroke. Because th- th- uh, I, I doubt the warden could keep in touch, can keep up with what he was doing. Yeah, no way. So he was so he was able to be a step ahead, you know, and probably make things look different or do things and set it up in a way that that the, even the warden didn't have the the whole plan. Maybe a piece of it, but didn't realize he didn't have enough dots to connect to realize, oh crap, look what yeah, he no, can do. No way. Yeah. 
because he was he was one sided. He realized I'm going to use this money for the future. And Andy Dufresne's like, yeah, this is mine, man. <laughs> it's just temporarily in your 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 hands. Right. Yeah, exactly. pretty much. Because I mean, that's one of the things that he kind of hinted at uh, to the warden was, you know, how <clears throat> far do you want to take this? And the warden just kind of jumped all over him saying you know uh because he was he wanted to get out legitimately yeah he wanted to be he wanted to be free and clear and that's when he said to the warden i'm not gonna i won't use any of this against you i won't talk to you about it and then he you know got put in the hole for two months yeah don't be so obtuse and i think that's when uh, andy realized exactly how long he was going to be in that prison if he didn't do something else about it yeah which I, I gotta admit, just as a, a character study, how interesting would it be to know that you're the smartest person in the entire prison, behind bars and not behind bars? Yeah. That you could play the game better than anybody else if you wanted right. to? Yeah. Yeah, they, they made a mistake, you know, uh, throwing him in, you know, and, and, and letting him just run free. But, I mean, he's just... I mean, it was just masterful the the way he he thought everything out. But I mean, but that that was with the whole hope. I mean, I think after the first uh, his his little stint in the hole, you know, it, it you know I, I think that might have sparked something as far as you know, like okay, that that was easy. But then all of a sudden he's wrapped up in in the life of just prison. I'm think- it's like I gotta I gotta get the hell out. I'm thinking that part of it, now that James mentioned the chess metaphor, I'm also thinking, like, if you noticed with the bookstore and uh, ingratiating himself with the guards and all that, I'm thinking that he did it on purpose. Like, he made, he did all this stuff to make everybody look like, oh, look, he's trying to make people better, trying to get this, trying to get that. And the whole end run was trying to get himself closer with the warden, closer to the well, items well, he needed. Which is not to say that he didn't have a stake in trying to help out the inmates, obviously, with... Um with the kid's name that I'm going to forget right now. The um, rock and roll kid. The rock and roll kid. Yeah. Um, he had a real stake in, in, in that kid's future. I mean, he, he was, he really gave a shit. Oh no, you're right. And, you're right. But you I'm, know, and, and you know, with, with the music and whatnot, I mean, he got the, the Hank William, uh, Williams records for the one guy. Um, I mean, he, he did it. I think with, with the end goal still in the back of his head, but, but you know, also for, for noble purposes. Well, no, know? yeah. Well, I'm not saying it was completely selfish. I guess it's saying that he knew it could be a betterment, but in the back of his mind, I bet he said, this can it, this is also a good thing because it ingratiates right. myself with the people, gives me more room to play. Yeah. But, and yeah, and I, the I, warden. It also, it also kind of screwed him over because then the warden realizes, oh, you know, this guy is worth, more to me inside for the rest of his life than he than he ever is going to be outside. Yeah. And then, uh, like we like I was saying to James, I mean, um, when he when he lost his shit on him in the office, that's when I think you realize like this guy's going to try to keep me here forever unless I get the hell out myself. Well, I you think know? part of it too was I mean because he had a he had to have that hole going for a long time to get through. Oh yeah, that, that's part of the that's another thing is the fact that he wasn't. As soon as he got that rock hammer, decided to scratch his name in there, he's been working on that hole. Like right. 20, 30 years. Yeah. So, I mean, his thing about the about uh, stepping up and getting them the beer, uh, helping the warden, doing their taxes, um, right. doing the books, uh, writing the letter to the Senate over and over and over again, right. trying to get funding. That's his whole thing of like... Look, I got a little shiny over here. Look at the shiny. Look at the shiny. Right. Yeah, you know? no, Smoke and mirrors. Yeah. yeah. He was just Don't. dangling the carrot for him to, to bite on so he gets him in his, in his good graces. And yeah. And they wouldn't toss his cell as much. They wouldn't do a right. lot of stuff that. Yeah. Like, I'm, I've always surprised. The one thing that surprised me is that big poster. <laughs> I mean, you would think that, hey, he could hide a hole behind it. Right. I, the whole time, the first time I saw this movie, I'm like, yeah, there's a hole behind it. The end of the movie. Hey, I was right. <laughs> yeah. Shocking. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, um, I mean, all in all, I think this is one of those movies that that is really top of the line for me. Um, I I don't think I can go five on it though. So, what are you giving it? I'll give shit. it four. Now, I do. Ha- you just call me a piece of shit. I did call you a piece of shit. That was a piece of shit statement to say. <laughs> Shut up. Um, so. The reason why is the only reason why I mean the fact that I I, I like there there's certain parts of this movie that that kind of just drone on for me at times. I could you, see that. You watch are you watching this kids? This is somebody trying to back up his bullshit just laying tracks in front of the train. 
Well, considering it just went by your house, you sure you're not supposed to cover? You're not covering something <laughs> up. But I mean, the the movie at times like slows down for me. There's not something in there that I mean the the dialogue, the acting really do drive this movie. I don't know. I, I just am not a big fan of like prison movies. I mean, the the continuous like chasing of the of what are they called the sisters on the beginning of the movie. I, I mean, I, I think if they if they actually got him to where I mean, like he literally like beat the dude half to death, I would be a little bit more happy. But instead of like the guards doing it, that's eh, kind of I don't know. I think that's a little more realistic for the time because they were trying to protect Andy. But what about you, Ryan? Um, I think he should have redemption on them. <laughs> uh, Red Dead Redemption. I, <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, I don't think they did anything in this movie they didn't mean to do. Like, I mean, everything in this thing was was for a fucking really good reason. You know what I mean? Even the the slow parts and and, and everything. I thought it was 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 for a purpose. Um, I would recommend this movie to absolutely anybody. I mean, there's a lot of movies that I would. You know, be like, oh, you might like this, but but you don't watch this. You watch something else. You watch these couple of movies. But this one, it's like, no, everybody in the world watch this movie, please. Um, you can skip Buffalo 66 and Rain, uh, and Super. Oh, but... yeah, I mean, yeah, skip the indie bullshit. I mean, you know, this is it just everybody make a movie like this. Oh, wow. You got to to recant. Um, I can't anything. I like me a good indie movie. So uh, what What about, what's your rating? It's not one of those things. When are you going to put up a good indie movie? You know, like, but this one... I mean, this is this is a five with a bullet. I mean, like, like, totally. It doesn't get any better for this as far as good storytelling and yeah, and, I, and execution of a good story. Well, for me, it doesn't go above and beyond, and that's what I consider a five. I I, I hate to. I, I mean, what do you want? A fucking car chase, dude? Like, what do you what are you really expecting? No, I don't want a bullet scene in there. Well, here's <laughs> here's here's my thing. I I have to be honest. I I. As much as it pains me to say that, I, I give it a four out of five. I love this movie. I doubt there's as many people who love this movie as much as I do. But a five to me is a completely different level movie. I mean, you, you have that uh, the, mo the movie with Elijah Woods, everything's illuminated to me. Like I said, we all gave it a five. To me, a five is, is rare. I rarely give movies a five. And I, I love this movie to death, but I just can't give it a five because... I don't know. I just it's not up that place to me. I mean, I, I would it's this close from a five, but I just can't give it a five. Yeah, for some reason, I mean, this movie just doesn't blow me away. That's that's what I consider a five. Is like when I watch this movie, I am just like I mean, utterly James, amazed how many times have you seen this movie, dude. What, what, I mean, try to think six. back the first time you saw that movie. You've I only mean, seen remember, it six. Remember the little tear coming down your eye. I've never. Just I, I've known James for dang near fifteen years, and I've never seen him cry once. I'm not quite sure like, what. what? A little tear? I'm just saying, look, dude, like, like you've seen this movie. I, I mean, did you get choked up when the sister got beat? <laughs> Is that what it was? Oh, oh he's a cripple. Like he didn't, uh, He'll yeah. never walk again. Is that what it was? <laughs> no, wow. wait, look, I mean, you've seen the movie 25 times. No, I've only seen it about somewhere Seriously? between six to eight times. I'm I've, not in double digits on okay, that. But still, I've seen I mean, it every year for the last, since 94. You know, five or six times more than you see most movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm like, I'm not like my my point being is that you're you're watching it now, like having seen it, knowing exactly what happens and everything. But the first time you watched that, I mean that that didn't strike you as above and beyond your average fucking movie. No, I it knew it was beyond the the average movie of like the ones that I scale around I two to like three. Average, I'm saying like it didn't go above and beyond a good movie. Like, oh no, no. All right. See, I, I want, no. I want to give it. I really want to give it a five. I really do. But for me, it just, I can't. It just, the movie, a five for me is a special movie. And I, I love this movie to death. I just can't. Oh, get this it. is a special movie. No, I, I think it's a great movie. Like I said, I mean, the acting is done impeccable. I mean, Morgan Freeman does a fantastic job. You see the growth. You see everything. But for me, it, it's not a movie that I think is a five because I mean, a five for me is a movie that I am like completely blown away by in the story from start to finish. And I mean, there, there's little jokes and, and humor and, and, and you get pulled in at certain points where there's like some type of, um, fast paced type of grab you in there. I mean, there is stuff like that in there, but it's not enough to where it just is uh, blows me away, which is what I consider a five. But I, I do think on the better, uh, on, 
even though I, I know. even though you know, I think James and I both give it a four. This is a movie that I'd say everybody needs to watch. Yeah, and I agree it's, with you on that one. I, I completely and utterly agree with you on that one. I mean, oh, if, I mean, if you have not sure seen this all, movie, you need I'm to. I'm pretty sure we all agree. Just, just not on the stars. That's the only thing we're yeah. We're, yeah. we're sort of disagreeing on. But as far as look, everybody watch this damn movie. One of the best movies. Relic. I mean, it could be argued for one of the best movies ever made. I mean, there could be an argument for it. It's Whoa. yeah. Maybe not best ever made, but definitely a top five. Yeah, I was going to say in top the th- five to top 30. It's in there. It has 50. to be. I'd say top 50. So. 50. <laughs> I defy you to name fucking 49 movies better than that. <laughs> I know a couple that aren't in it. Do you need me to put the list out for you again? Uh, where, could... where was Shawshank on your list? Well, you see, I think we discussed this when we were just 49. talking. Forty nine point six. When we were talking about the list, is the list of the top fifty would be in no gen, no order, no general order. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. there would be a general order. I think that in the top ten, there I would be a general order. I think it was just a process trying to 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 come up with with all of the good movies that we've ever seen. So yeah, I think we started that list. We're gonna have to wrap up the, the the movie review part and start getting into the movie reviews, the movie news. I was gonna say we just did the movie. Yeah, reviews. Yeah, sorry, the movie news. And um, so the, the, the probably one of the most heartbreaking thing ever, the Michael Bay remake of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is still a go. Ah, Jesus. And apparently the guy who, who originally started it, um, he's compared it to the Avengers. Wait, what? He says, yeah, um, oh, God, Michael Bay, so this is quote unquote, Michael Bay has made some great movies, intense movies. What we're talking about being is inspired by movies like the Avengers for scope, roots and origin. I, so wait a minute, we're already throwing this asshole out because he said that Michael Bay's made good movies. Yeah, yeah I kind of agree. I, 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 you know, I if you like, man, his movies aren't even comparable to '80s action movies. So I, I, I can't. Um, yeah, and the other one is 20th Century Fox cancels the Independence Day 3D plans. Thank God. I loved ID4, but I don't want to see it in 3D. <laughs> I mean, okay, were they going to take the original and just, like, 3D it? Yeah, that's the only way they're going to oh be able to do it. God, They're probably really? up-convert it and 3D it. That's the only way I could do it. I see it. You know, I don't I don't dislike Independence Day 4, but there is no way I want to see it 3D. I don't see the point. I love the movie. I, I, I even own it. But, yeah, I mean, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, even the president's speech was, like, really, like, I mean, What's over the top, like, what? Oh no, that wasn't over the top. I mean, that that that's up there with one of the better, you know, like like inspirational presidential. Speeches. I know, that's not but like... it's it's a rip off of another speech. Of I know. Another speech. Is I mean, it? it's it's borrowed, copy, cut and paste, and rewritten. I mean, I love the speech though. It's one of my favorites. Um, I mean, but you're like listening to it, and you're like, I mean, was this like it's, Reagan? It's no longer Truman? an American <laughs> holiday. I mean, it's like it's... everybody's like. It's like all the great speeches, and they just like kind of mix and match. Like right, like John just said, cut and paste, and they mash it all together, shoot it up. Today will be our butt, Independence Day. And there um, you go. Did, uh, you both have seen uh, "Live for Your Die Hard"? Yeah. You remember the uh, the little cut up um, terrorist message that they put together with all the yeah all the presidents? Uh, yeah. One of my favorite. One, one cuts. of the only good parts of that movie, but that was I love watching that. Wait, there's more than. Yes, and the other one is the new man. Of, <laughs> the new Man of Steel trailer is going to be playing with the Hobbit movie. The okay. next Man of Steel, which I, I'm looking forward to seeing, actually, the seeing the trailer. Well, I'm looking forward to the Hobbit. Well, so am I. Well, but the, the, the trailer's playing with it. Um, it was supposed to be a couple other ones, is but this that was like the a one. minute and a half, four minute trailer. Why, yeah, why, I, why I was, does it even freaking matter what the movie is playing with? I mean, like, you seriously. know, I, I, to be honest, I don't know, but this is supposed to be the introduction of the DC Avengers type of thing. I just, well, yeah, the, ju- it's the gonna JLA. Be the first one Whatever. that's going to tie in with the uh, JLA. I know, um, I know it is, but I mean, I'd be more interested in when they're going to do the Martian Manhunter trailer. And here's the one that they're I. They're never going to do that movie. Apparently, they're going to do Aquaman, though. Uh, they've already signed on for, for Flash. Hey, look, I'm talking to fishes. <laughs> I mean, seriously? <laughs> Uh, my uh, superpower, watch this. And the, the other one, dolphin. now here's the one that surprised me, and I still don't quite get, but I want to see it. The Saw director is going to helm a MacGyver movie. Yeah, I knew that. I did know that. I, I want to see this just because I want to see the Saw meets MacGyver. Sounds very interesting. Well, at least So he's going to kill the guy laying down. At least it's not Guyver. 
<laughs> I actually a Saw Giver. I would totally watch that. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. No, it wouldn't. I mean, that suit was so retarded. But it's a live action anime. Lay off. Right. It's so retarded. Oh. That's like a live action Mickey Mouse. It just doesn't translate well. I mean, they could have done the same like outfits with Sailor Moon. <laughs> it's not as bad as Giver Two. Oh, geez. oh, thank Christ, I haven't seen that. Really? No. You skipped Giver Two? Wow. And, and what was I not supposed to? I mean, is this like you having? I have self esteem. I will not watch that. <laughs> yeah, well, it was something <laughs> like that actually. But Giver oh. Two is so bad, even trauma went. Dear God. <laughs> Um, and I like this tri- one, and and the other one was this is not on my rundown, but it was the new Die Hard movie with his son. Oh, I know. I just I saw know, the trailer for it the the at a Skyfall when I saw it. Oh, so it's geez. it's uh, his son apparently is uh, he's in goes to Russia and shenanigans happen and apparently he has to save the day like no old fat cop from New York can. Hey, come to Russia. We'll have a few laughs. Yeah, I just so I. Uh, have here's you, have, you got, have you guys seen Looper yet? No, no not yet. I want it was to. really funny watching um, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt do his best uh, Bruce Willis impersonation. I'm gonna have to get that one. I, I've been <clears throat> wanting to watch that one. My my only thing is here's the thing. It has to be R. If it's a PG-13 like the, the last one, I'm just yeah, not gonna no, see that's, it. That's that's what really killed the last one. I mean, you know, it was it was still kind <clears> of a fun type of type of action movie. Yeah, but so was RoboCop yeah. three. But it was in the theaters for two days. Good point. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's full of plot holes. But I mean, the the PG-13 watered down version of Die Hard it would it really really took and, it off. And the shelf only me. reason why it was PG-13 is he cussed at the end. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's really that's it. Right. Yippee ki yay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, so, really. I, I just I'm hoping it's good, but at this point I'm I'm saying I'm assuming that one of my favorite favorite movies because I love Die Hard one, Die Hard two was okay, three sucked, so I'm assuming it's just oh, going to be on, worse. Don't say that about three. You can't say that you can't, two, you can't say two was okay and then three sucked. That's the other way around. Yes, I just did. I could say it all I want. <laughs> was okay, if not good. Okay, it's a comparable with two. Sam Jackson, dude, that. You know, come on, that drives that whole fucking movie. Of course. I mean, back in New York, everybody wanted to see it in New York. <laughs> Nothing want... good ever happens in L.A. Wasn't that, like, right Oregon around the time that York? Escape from New York came out, too? I actually don't remember that. Probably. No. I think so, anyway. And then they did Escape from, and, from and... LA, which was one of the worst <clears throat> movies ever put to film. And, and ladies and gentlemen, next week is going to start of our uh, very Tarantino qu- uh, Christmas, and it's James' pick for the first one leading up to the Django Unchained. So, James, what's the movie we're going to do next week? I was going through them all, and, you know, I called this one. I said I was going to do it a long time ago. So we're going to – I know Ryan's been looking forward to this one. Look at how excited Please he is. Please don't be Jackie Brown. I, I, I yep, mean, it's Jackie Brown. Expense. Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown. That's you. You went through all of the movies, and you would pick Jackie Brown. <laughs> Hell no, I didn't. <laughs> Jeez, really? I was, was going to say that's that, that's that, that's a fist fight material. Jackie Brown. <laughs> Inglorious <laughs> Bastards. Wait, repeat that again. Inglorious Bastards. Oh, okay, okay. Of course. <sighs> I'll, I'll watch that movie anytime. Yeah, I'm like, geez. Don't don't need to be in the mood for that one. Oh, you, you actually kind of had me worried there for a second. It's like, no, screw it. I'm going to skip this next episode. I know. Well, I was waiting for Ryan just to, like, get pissed at me, but he knew I was kidding. I couldn't get him to I, believe I, it. I honestly didn't. I mean, I'm thinking really? maybe, you, he's, you, maybe he's going for a B-side. I don't you know. Could, I you, could see, you could see that the veins starting to pop out in his head. You could see yeah. going, crap, I've got to <laughs> no, watch no, that No, that was again. yours. <laughs> you had the veins so popping out. Bridget Fonda gets shot again. Ryan is just seriously like I thought you. I thought you know I was joking. I was trying to get you to like give me a reaction. You're just kind of staring at me like. <laughs> is this because I said exit wounds? Yes. Uh, so no, I don't know. But so, anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, every movie this month is going to be Tarantino is because celebrating a Django, and we're all here giant fans of Quentin Tarantino. And we're gonna break down his movies like champs. And oh, also when I was pulling up Quentin Tarantino stuff, just glancing through because i mean i almost tossed out dust till dawn too Ooh. um anyways uh i was looking Wrong through property. and next year there's or not not next year they had kill bill 3 with question marks on imdb yeah i've heard i've also heard in theory is there's going to be a live uh, anime version but is this going to be well, like the sh- rumors of, of three since two came out i know but is this going to be uh the whole bloody affair is this going to be because i mean that's something we've been wanting for 
since Kill Bill 1, I've I'll, been wanting the whole bloody affair. I'll but. be honest. I'd see it in theaters. If they put an intimation in the middle of a five-hour movie, I'd do it. Sure. Yeah. I love, I, I, you know, and they could actually see him where it was supposed to be instead of having an action and a drama, just have it all mixed in. Well, I would totally see it. Yeah. yeah there's, <laughs> you, ever, you ever go in, uh, online and look at the, uh, the, um, the, the order and really go through the order of, of Pulp Fiction, of, of where the scenes fit together in the timeline? I haven't done that yet, no. It is, it is uh, I mean, it's... Because you kind of figure it out just from watching the movie a few times, but when you're looking at it, you're like, oh, wow, that is a wildly different movie. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, everything in- it's like Memento played in order. Yeah, which is freaking bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Um, but, yeah, I always thought those the, the whole thing was really cool because, I mean, you're just watching the whole the, the movie and towards the end of it is when you start piecing together, oh, that's... Right. He was going from there to there when that ha- whoa. Right. I still love that. Whose bike is this, Zed? Who's Zed? Zed it's not a bike. Zed. It's a chopper, baby. Yeah, it's a chopper, baby. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Zed's dead. So, ladies and gentlemen, I gave Shawshank Redemption a four out of five. James gave it a four out of five, and Ryan gave it the five out of five. And for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. This episode of Old Guy Tech TV is brought to you by Ward's Automotive, specializing in banks, power, and pack brake, servicing your car or truck, and specializing in diesel engines. Over 30 years of service located in Diamond Springs, California. Give them a call at 530-626-5588.